All right, so if you've been around the channel at all recently, um, I talk mostly about data analytics. Now, previously I was talking about statistics because that was my major, but now I'm a data analyst and I have been for about two years full time, a little bit longer than that if you count my internship. Um, so I have some experience in the field, but a lot of people watching the channel, they want to become data analysts themselves. They want to become data scientists, data analysts, um, somewhere in the data sphere, they want to be statisticians. But what I want to talk about today is why it's so hard to find a job in the field right now. Um, now, a lot of people, I'm hoping, if you've listened to me repeat it over and over again for however many years I've ran this statistics channel and data analytics channel, I've talked about when you go to college, the main goal should be return a return on your investment. Because really, that's what it is. It's an investment into yourself, and that's how it should be treated. If that investment does not pay off, then it's a bad investment. In order to become a data analyst, there's so many different things you have to do, so many different things you have to learn. But it's not like they're super, super challenging. And oftentimes, the degree that you get is just that first step in the door. It's kind of the table stakes, if you will. And by table stakes, I mean that is what you have to bring to the table in order to get a job. However, it's not the only thing you should be bringing to the table to get the job. Um, so I'm going to talk about some of the challenges becoming a data analyst at this current state of affairs. And I'm only sp speaking from a United States uh, point of view because that's kind of what I know. I don't know how job markets are across the across the globe and other areas. And I'm sorry, I don't, I'm just not aware. Um, it could be completely different elsewhere in the world. And that's going to have to be kind of contextualized to whatever your situation is. Um, but at least in the United States right now, we saw major layoffs recently um, within the past year or two, especially at big tech companies. And oftentimes at these big tech companies, they were kind of trimming some of the fat. The economy was kind of slowing down. Things were getting more expensive. And so they had to trim the fat of areas that maybe didn't pertain directly to making money for that business. I'll give you an example. Um, at Apple, this is just hypothetical. I don't know if this is true or not. But at Apple, their main product is the iPhone, their laptops, their operating system, the App Store. Those are things that directly bring income into their pockets. Now, obviously, Apple's a huge company. They can afford some research and development and things like that. Um, but let's say you're an analyst working on a team that's developing the Apple um, Vision Pro, I think it's called. And, you know, that's not a huge money driver right now. Maybe there's not a lot of popularity around it. Maybe, um, you know, it didn't have as much success as they thought it would. Whatever the case may be, they decide, okay, this team they're going to be cut. We can't keep offering this product. We're operating on a huge loss. There was so much research and development into that. And it's just not paying off. We're going to cut the team and um, let go of the, those members on the team. If you're an analyst working on that team, you might have been let go. And obviously, if you're working at Apple, you probably have some skills. You're probably an experienced analyst. Um, and you're probably going to be looking for a new job. Now, let's say company B, they're hiring. It's a new upcoming company. They're growing pretty quickly and they need to gain some, um, some expertise on their data analytics team. Do you think they're going to be going to the guy fresh out of college who knows SQL, Excel, a little bit of R or Python um, in Tableau? Or are they going to hire the guy from Apple who could head a team of analysts, his vast knowledge in the area, is understanding of all the different intricacies of working in the cloud, working within a data analytics team, the data analytics pipeline, has a vast knowledge of complex data and how to clean it. I think you know the answer. I don't need to keep going. Um, so this is part of the reason why it's so hard to get a data analytics job right now. And that's amongst all of the other things going on in the economy in terms of job growth um, in different sectors. But there's some things you can do to level the playing field, if you will. Um, in my example, I said some guy fresh out of college, they know some SQL, some Excel, some R or Python, and maybe some Tableau. Hopefully those are things if you majored in the right kind of area um, and you know you wanted to go down this data analyst path all along, hopefully those are some things that you learned in school. But what does that guy not have in the example with Apple? Um, well, with that example, the guy just coming out of college, he doesn't have experience. Um, and experience isn't something you can just gather by learning the topics that you need to get into the game in the first place. Experience is something that you need to do on your own time or on somebody else's time. By that, I mean you either have to do it through work experience, so working a job for a couple of years. That's enough experience to put it on your resume and say, yep, I did this. And I can prove it. 
I can show you, I can tell you, and I can explain how that benefited me and how it'll benefit you in an interview. Or you can gain it through a personal project. This is something that I stress so much on the channel. Um, and real quickly, let me take a sun chip break. They're mini sun chips, which is pretty cool, huh? And the Pringles. Anywho, I stress so much on the channel that you need to get a self project. You need to be doing them. You need to fill out your resume because those are the interesting parts of the resume. I've heard a lot online um, from some of my people that I respect and listen to a lot that the top three fourths of your resume, most employers are not going to be looking at them. They don't care what your GPA was. They don't really care what your major was. They might look gloss over some of the skills that you list, but most of that's going to be caught by automated software anyways. So that's where the table stakes come in. That you went to college, you have a degree in something pertaining to the field that you're applying to, that you have some skills in the area of which you're going to be working. Um, maybe that you have some prior work experience in the area as well. These, there's automated systems that looks at your resume whenever you're submitting them to a job. And if you don't have those table stakes, they just throw it out anyways. Um, so this is where I think it's important not to lie. I would never recommend that. But if you have any experience in a field, you should be including it on the resume in that top three fourths of your, of your resume and the skills and the experience and work experience, whatever schooling experience. Those are where you should be putting those things. And you can, can kind of like SEO hack it and make sure you're putting the right terms that they're asking for in the job posting. So let's say they refer to one thing in the job posting and you refer to that something else in your resume. I would just tweak that so that it references exactly what they're asking for. Because they might have an automated system that's set up to look for that keyword and if it doesn't see it, the resume gets thrown out and no human being actually ever sees it. I'm not saying that's what happens, but it definitely could be. And this is what I did on my resumes. I made sure that I met the criteria for what the job posting was. I put all of the keywords that they're asking for that I had experience in. But in the bottom one fourth of your resume is where you get to put the fun stuff. It's where you get to brag. It's where you get to talk about stuff that you've done and accomplishments that you've done, exciting projects you've worked on, exciting opportunities you've had in the past, or maybe even some awards you've gotten for some of your work. Oftentimes, at least when I'm looking at a resume, because I've been involved in one hiring process as an analyst, and I've looked at a few resumes. Obviously, you look through and you see some impressive experience in their schooling, they have the master's degree and blah, 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 with a blah, blah, blah GPA. It's like, okay, cool. But what have you done? What have you actually done in the real world in a business? Because that's what we're hiring for you, you for, is to work in a business. What have you done? And sometimes people don't have that. Sometimes they have a few, like, side projects that they've done and they put that at the bottom and that's where they get to brag about it and get to talk about it and that's what kind of makes you excited is somebody reading a resume when you're kind of going through the hiring process so if you can go end to end from a data analytics project and talk about what you learned what you did and what it accomplished that is the story and the overall picture that somebody hiring you wants to see so you're going to be Getting out of college, I think most of you are kind of college age or just out of college or just coming into college. Um, I think to me, that's the most important thing because you have to have the table stakes, but everybody has to have the table stakes. And the problem with data analytics careers is that there's a lot of people who want to do it. Not only is there a lot of people who want to do it in the United States graduating from college, there's a lot of the people around the world graduating from different boot camps or trainings that specialize in data analytics. So there's so many people, and I mean so many people online, um, around the world, in the United States, wherever, that have the skills, the specific skills and trainings to become a data analyst. It's not super, super challenging. It's maybe time consuming and monotonous, but it's not super challenging. SQL is not terribly hard to learn. Excel, not terribly hard to learn. Something like R or Python, at least the basics of it, not terribly hard to learn. In Tableau especially, it's point and click. Really, a six-year-old could get it. No offense if you have trouble with Tableau. I do as well. But the point being, it's all easy stuff to learn, and a lot of people know it. So how can you differentiate yourself? You have to separate yourself in somewhere, whether it be in the interview or the resume. If you're not getting any interviews, it has to be the resume. Do some self-projects. Try to gain some experience in 
even if it's not directly related to the industry you're applying to. Um, get some experience that shows that you're excited about it. It shows you know what you're doing and you can talk about a project and something you're passionate about from end to end and show how you use the data analytics process, the skills that you have learned in college or a boot camp or a training, show how you use them to complete a project, answer a question and make some impact. That's ultimately what your job is as a data analyst is to storytell. In one way or another, you're storytelling. And it might not be, you know, like a bedtime story where you put your head down and fall asleep. Hopefully not, because that's probably not good. But it's a story you tell with data. And it's one of the most important things um, when hiring an analyst is that ability to turn data into actionable insights. Um, with everything going on in the economy, in the world, across the job market, and specifically as it relates to data analytics. Um, and I haven't even talked about AI. That's a big disruptor in the field. With everything going on in that area, you need something to differentiate yourself and you need to be able to explain that to the employer or potential employer. So hopefully that helps. It is hard to get a job right now in data analytics. Um, but I think if you take this advice, you really focus on telling a story and crafting an example of you using your skills in real life, you're going to have a lot better luck and you're going to be able to find a job. If you made it this far in the video, like you obviously found it valuable in some way or you just thought I was a cool dude. Um, either way though, there's a link in the description to my discord. If you haven't joined already, um, that's kind of where everybody who is interested in the topic hangs out. There's quite a few people on there now. Um, we talk about data analytics. We talk about statistics. People chat about their homework, which I'm so far removed from school that I'm not too much help, but luckily there's like hundreds of people in there who are going through the same thing and maybe they can help you out and maybe you can make a new friend. So check that out. Um, join up and I will see you over there. Watch this video next, though, if you want to learn more about the data analytics process and how you can learn these skills for your own. Thanks.